In a personal injury or car accident case, one of the insurance companies or responsible defendants may be able to have their doctor examine you. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the insurance company having a doctor examine you can result in you receiving less money for your settlement. Jay-Z Helps of Florida Injury Law Firm. I'm personal injury attorney Justin Ziegler. When an insurance company or responsible defendant who caused your accident hires a doctor to examine you, it's called an independent medical examination, also known as an IME. But the reality is, despite the name, it's truly not independent. The insurance company, who you're generally at odds with, or the responsible party who caused your accident, who you're going up against, is paying the doctor to examine you. Now in Florida, for example, your own car insurance company has the right to hire a doctor to examine you. Keep in mind, your insurance company is paying the doctor. Now, the doctor has to be honest, but in most cases, there is a range where the doctor can still be honest and give a certain opinion. So let's say the range is here. For example, if you have a fracture, one doctor can say that the fracture is not that bad, yet another doctor can look at the same fracture and say the fracture is worse. The worse you're injured, all things equal, the more money you receive in your personal injury claim. In Florida, for example, if you are making what's called a PIP claim, which essentially after in most car accident cases, you have PIP insurance, which is going to pay your medical bills up to a certain amount of money, usually $10,000. Your own auto insurance company has the right to hire a doctor to examine you. Their goal is, should be to give you a fair exam, but if the doctor says that your treatment is not related to the accident or it's not reasonable, they can say that you do not need more treatment, which then you would lose your PIP benefits. You have the right to sue your insurance company to try to receive those PIP benefits, but understand that your own doctor is being paid by the insurance company. When you go to the doctor's office, they're generally gonna give you a questionnaire to fill out. You gotta be careful because this questionnaire can later be used against you. So if you fail to say, for example, that you have back pain on the questionnaire and later on you complain of back pain, the insurance company may use this against you, saying that you truly did not have back pain because you failed to put it on the questionnaire. And if you really had it, you would have written it on the questionnaire. Also, if the driver who hits you does not have enough bodily injury insurance, which would pay for your pain and suffering and out-of-pocket medical bills and other lost wages, your uninsured motorist insurer, through your uninsured motorist insurance, would pay for these damages. The uninsured motorist insurer also has the right in Florida, for example, to hire a doctor to examine you. Again, that doctor is being paid by the insurance company. Their goal, so long as they're fair, is to put the light of your injuries in the light most favorable to the insurance company. Insurance companies typically use conservative doctors who minimize your injuries. I'm not saying they're dishonest at all, but again, your injuries have a certain range. For example, one doctor can say your injury is a 3% impairment rating, another doctor can say 5% and they're both telling the truth. But your uninsured motorist insurance company has the right to examine you. That's pursuant to the policy. Now, oftentimes in reality, at least before a lawsuit, it doesn't happen. They don't examine you, which is good news. It's one less exam to attend, one less questionnaire to fill out, etc. Going back to personal injury protection claims, the worse your insurer is from my past experience, the higher chance they're going to send you to their doctor, a doctor that they hired to examine you. This is because they're more likely to want to cut off your PIP benefits, which would prevent PIP from paying your medical bills. The better insurers, generally for the most part the ones that you see on TV nationally, there's a less likelihood that they're going to send you th to their doctor to try to cut off your PIP benefits. Many of these doctors who examine you are friendly, but do not mistake a friendly doctor who is very nice to you during the exam as one who's gonna give you a favorable report. The main purpose of these exams, these independent medical exams, are threefold. One, the doctor is gonna ask you some facts about how the incident happened. In a perfect world, if the insurance company wants to reduce the amount that they pay you, their goal is that 
the doctor says that the accident did not cause your injury, that your injuries are not that bad, that your injuries are not permanent, that's very important in Florida because in most car accidents, but not all, you need a permanent injury to even get one penny for either past pain and suffering or future pain and suffering. And then the insurance company would like to hear that you're not gonna need any more future medical treatment. These independent medical exams are very important. They're particularly important in cases where your injury is soft tissue, where you complain of generalized pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, or even if you have a herniated disc. A lot of times, one doctor, usually the insurance company doctor, is going to say your herniated disc is not a permanent injury, it's not related to the accident, and the pain that it's generating, if any, should not be that bad. Hopefully your doctor, so long as he's honest, relates your herniated disc, for example, or your pain to the accident. Finding the right doctor is very, very important to your personal injury case. In a perfect world, you could hop on the internet, choose any doctor at random, and everything would be equal. The reality is there are doctors who do not like getting involved in personal injury claims. And if you randomly call doctors through the internet or yellow pagers or however you find them, you're gonna see that a lot of doctors are going to ask, how did the accident happen? Or their assistants are gonna ask. Soon as you say that the accident was a result of a slip and fall or car accident, a lot of doctors are not going to wanna to treat you. They just do not wanna be involved in personal injury claims. A lot of doctors are also very conservative and are gonna minimize your injuries because they don't wanna take either the time to write a report for you that's friendly and helpful to you, or they just don't wanna get involved. I'm going to talk about an actual case where a motorcycle rider was hit by a truck driver. The truck driver made a left-hand turn and cut off the motorcyclist and hit him, and the motorcyclist ultimately had a fracture beneath the kneecap, and the case settled for $445,000. He had surgery to that fracture, which is known as a tibial plateau fracture. The tibia is the larger of the two bones in the lower leg, and hardware was put in. He also had a fracture to his finger and surgery on that, and then the metal hardware was removed. But the insurance adjuster asked me if I would allow my client to submit to an independent medical examination, or IME. The good news is, in a claim against someone else who caused your injury, a personal injury claim, the insurance company, their insurance company, or them, are not entitled to an independent medical exam before you file a lawsuit. If you file a lawsuit, they are entitled to it. What I did in this case is I happened to know a orthopedic surgeon. I had him review my client's medical records because he's generally conservative and hired by many insurance companies. I wanted to see what he would say, figuring that the insurance company in this particular case would likely send the file to a similar doctor who was very conservative. My doctor said that my client may not have a permanent injury and may have very little, if any, permanent impairment. So I chose to decline the opportunity to have their independent medical examination of my client. And again, the case settled for $445,000. But the moral of that story is you do not need to let the careless drivers or careless party, if you slip and fall or are otherwise injured somewhere else, you don't need to let their doctor them hire a doctor and examine you. In another case, a shopper claimed that he slipped and fell on a supermarket floor. He claimed that there was a substance on the floor that caused the fall, and the supermarket's adjuster, who initially handled the case, denied liability, ultimately saying that he felt the supermarket, or she felt the supermarket, did nothing wrong. They were kind enough to send us the video, as you can see right here, but we were forced essentially to file a lawsuit, so we sued and the insurance company for the supermarket hired a doctor to examine my client. Now my client's injury that he claimed was that a pre-existing injury, an injury that existed before the fall, was worsened due to the fall. He tore his Achilles tendon before the fall and we claimed that the fall caused the need for two skin grafts to his lower leg and he had some other injuries as well. So the insurance company sent the injured shopper to their doctor and as you can imagine, their doctor basically did not relate any of the injuries to the accident. On one of the injuries, he said that 
he can't comment on it, that a neurologist should look at it and comment on it, but this is just very, very routine in many cases. If it's a fracture that you're claiming, the odds are the other insur the insurance company doctor is going to have no problem relating the fracture to the accident. But once you start dealing with tears and uh, infections and generalized pain, you're going to have a much tougher time finding doctors that the insurance company hires to say that those are related to the accident. The doctor also said that he reviewed the video of the fall and my client's foot really didn't even strike the floor. We disagreed with him. I felt that the video showed my client's foot striking the f floor, which worsened, again, the pre-existing injury that he had. A couple other pointers. If you go to an IME exam, you are entitled to have a court reporter, stenographer there to record it so that there's no misunderstandings about what you said. Keep in mind, you're going to tell the doctor whatever symptoms that you have, he's going to record them. If you have a stenographer there to take notes, essentially, then that will become the most thorough record of what you said. You can also bring a video camera or bring someone with you that has a video camera that can video the exam, once again, to just show the length of the exam, to show what the doctor examined, just to make sure that everything is accurate and fair. If you're not fluent in English, you have the right to also bring an interpreter with you. You can pay for that. Sometimes possibly your own insurance company would pay for the cost of an interpreter. Again, you want to make sure everything is recorded accurately. You would hate to tell the doctor something in Spanish and there's a chance that the doctor doesn't write down the complaint or doesn't understand it or doesn't hear it or his staff misinterprets it to him. So spend the money if you'd like and hire an interpreter if you're not 100% fluent in English. The devil's in the details and the details are very, very important in your case. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment and let me know if there's any other aspects or important things that I didn't talk about in an independent medical exam and how it affects a personal injury case. My name is attorney Justin Ziegler. My office is in Miami. I serve Florida. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like the video. Have a beautiful day.